welcome to the SOAS podcast. Each episode we'll be discussing the latest in economics, politics and culture. I'm Isabel Edwards and today I'm talking to Dr. Raphael Schechter, anthropologist, author and one of the curators of Motions of This Kind, which is the exhibition currently on display at the Brunei Gallery. Um, so Raphael, you were kind enough to give us a tour of the gallery and for such a compact space, there's loads going on in there. Um, so could you tell me a bit about the uh, how the exhibition came about. Okay, cool. So I did my undergrad at SOAS, so uh, I'm an alumni, but I'm actually based at UCL now, just five minutes away. I did anthropology here, I'm teaching anthropology now as well, I did my PhD there. So I did a, uh, a British Academy postdoc between 2014 and 17. Um, but uh, during that time, uh, I was focused on contemporary art in the Philippines. And when I was out there, having done previous uh, curating throughout all my projects, um, I applied to the Brunei Gallery to a kind of their regular open call for the exhibitions mm. uh, and thankfully they said yes and at that point I spoke to two of my kind of key interlocutors in the Philippines, two curators and artists, Renan Leruan and Merva Spina who agreed to create, curate the project together. So it was a long time coming, this was three years ago when we were accepted right, okay. through the project um, but it really you know, it, it acts in two ways, one uh, as a way of kind of exploring contemporary art in the Philippines today to a very particular kind of concept of belatedness. But also it's actually a, a research methodology for me. So as uh, someone who's still kind of doing research on this area, the exhibition in fact lets me both kind of deepen the relationship with the people I'm working with, artists, curators, directors, fabricators, gallerists, etc., from the whole kind of ecology of the art world. But it also then lets me kind of explore a particular idea collaboratively with my informant interlocutors friends. So really kind of there's a there's a multiple kind of different aspects of the exhibition on kind of the surface and then also at a more meta level. So I think when I went in what mm -hmm. struck me first is the sort of the variety of media mm. that you've got as part of the exhibition. So yeah. we've got um, the Snow White part that's mm -hmm. very visual mm -hmm. and also that's the first thing you hear when you go in is this mm -hmm. kind of like high pitched yeah. giggling but then we've got things like embroidery mm -hmm. and all of this so yeah. um, maybe you could give us a bit more detail about some of the uh, exhibits. Yeah of course so I, I think in, in choosing the artists so between the three of us as curators you know we firstly had a long list of artists we wanted to work with who could address the theme they're thinking about temporality thinking about the relationships between you know, the UK, Philippines and Brunei. Mm. But also um, we wanted to work broadly with our kind of generation of artists. You know, there were lots of fantastic arts in the Philippines, but we wanted to kind of keep it to the, the, this generation. Um, of course, have a kind of a, we had a 50-50 split of female and male artists. Mm. But then also to think about not only artists who could relate to this theme of belatedness, but also who could show different aspects of different types of mediums and different kinds of works. So yeah, exactly as you said, Sian Dairit's work is you know, a large-scale embroidered map made both in the Philippines and in the UK. So um, designed by Sian, but then embroidered in the Philippines by a local kind of embroiderer, and then in the UK by Hand and Lock, with the oldest embroiderers in the UK and the embroiderers of the royal family and royal military, which was not about the prestige of working with them, but actually a way of weaving empire within the textile itself. We've also got, as you said, video work. So Isa Hoxon's work on uh, Snow White, and this idea of kind of performed happiness, this idea of labour, in particularly in Hong Kong Disneyland, where a lot of the choreographers and performers from the Philippines end up once they hit the kind of the glass ceiling in the Philippines and end up performing as background dancers, as candelabras, as mm. monkeys within you know Disneyland Hong Kong. Then we've got huge video pieces uh, from Yasson Banal. Uh, in the basement, uh, and also uh, the 11 projectors within uh, Michel Dizon's work, vintage analog projectors. Uh, we've got uh, another video kind of essay by Lisa May David and Gabriel Wastel Saint uh, We've got a huge mural by Amy mm. uh, Leon and Enzo Camacho. So, really, it is a huge variety of different kinds of works. Very few paintings, mostly kind of installations, but really kind of trying to see as many different aspects as possible rather than reducing it to kind of one kind of form. So it's not a painting show. Yeah, exactly. and it's actually, it's very interactive as well, isn't it? I yeah. mean, there's the colouring mm. station where you can sit and colour yeah. in your labouring so wide. Yeah. Um, and also all these sort of immersive yeah. pieces where you're, you're sort of in the middle of it. Absolutely. Out, which I think um, as a 
as someone experiencing it, it makes it much more interesting. Yeah, and as well, I think what, what's important as well is that all the projects, you know, their aesthetic works, their artworks, but every single one are also kind of long term research projects. Mm. So each of them, are, each of the artists, like there's 11 artists, nine bodies of work, two of them are pairs, but each of them are really uh, invested in very long term research practices, investigating different aspects of you know, empire, colonialism, labour, um, spectacular, the state, lots of different aspects of both kind of Filipino and wider, mm. worldwide uh, kind of contemporary and, and kind of historical information which they are interweaving within their works itself. So these are long-term research projects which then this exhibition acts as kind of a fulcrum within that long-term work. Mm. And it's interesting because it is, um, like you say, all the artists involved are, they're either working in mm -hmm. or from the Philippines. Yeah. But there is quite a lot of SOAS in it as mm. well. It's almost like yeah. it's local and then it's very uh, outward looking. So um, like the, uh, you have to remind me, but the exhibition with the security cameras yeah. that had to be yeah. from SOAS. Yeah. Um, be interesting to hear a bit more. About so yeah, it, it, it was important without, with, throughout the exhibition that you know, the fact that we were at SOAS was important. You know, that was actually the very first thing we said as a kind of trio of curators when we said, okay, what are we doing? One of the first things we said was, why SOAS? Mm. Why the Brunei? How does it make sense to simply try and chuck 11 artists, as you said, working in or on the Philippines, into SOAS and see what happens? So in many ways, we try to kind of really relate to that history. So firstly, think about SOAS as, you know, the school where the empire was run out of. The school where you know colonial officers were actually trained mm. to go out into the world to places such as the Philippines. So Ifor Balpal, who was a, a Welsh political scientist, um, who did you know years and years of research in the Philippines, gave got his kind of official official accreditation to go there from SOAS. So then, yeah, luckily, yeah. he left. You know, he bequeathed all his 150 boxes of, of data on the Philippines to the SOAS archive which uh, about three or four of our artists really invested in within the project. Mm. So we not only have um, an archival, kind of classical archive with display curated by Dr. Christina Juan, who's the head of the Philippine Studies here at SARAS, um, but also we utilize that research both physically in some of the installations, but also in terms of the data that went into the works. So that fact of like being at SARAS was crucial. And as you say, Yasson's work, uh, which incorporated a range of surveillance and CCTV cameras, it was crucial that they were from SOAS. Mm. So along with his projectors, which we also utilised, which was crucial, which were also from SOAS, yeah. what he was interested in is what has either gone through those projectors, so all the information, data that's been siphoned through those projectors into SOAS, and the same way within the surveillance cameras, what they have seen as institutional mm. artefacts of kind of capture, so it was very important to him and, and our artists and to us that the site-specific nature of where the exhibition was taking place was key. Mm -hmm. we weren't, we're not in a vacuum, it's not a white cube, it's a space with a very particular institutional history. Mm. Brilliant, and um, so the exhibition is on until the 22nd of June, yes, isn't it? Right, and yeah. then what's, is, the research projects will presumably continue. Yeah, though. absolutely. So we had uh, a conference here at SOAS on the day, the day after the exhibition. So we're currently um, putting that into a book, which is really important. So mm. the legacy of the project, the way it kind of continues on, the fact that it doesn't just stop now mm. is crucial. Um, so yeah, so the book is the first thing which we're already working on. And then we're planning on um, moving the exhibition back to the Philippines. So not simply right. re you know, reproducing it there you know, piece by piece, but working with all the artists to do a kind of new iteration in Manila. So actually going there in November to start working on that and discussing that with people. And we're also hoping to work with the British Council, who were also very helpful in the exhibition, mm. um, to actually take artworks from their collection. They have an incredible collection of, um, of uh, works, collect, collect over, over the last hundred years. So they've offered for us to, to take pieces of that from their collection, each of our artists mm. to choose a piece, which will then take back the Philippines. And then they'll produce new works kind of playing with those works or mm. playing off those works. Which again kind of reverses the flow. Normally it's, you know, booty from, you know, far on a yeah, far yeah, yeah. coming back to here. And we're gonna be kind of returning with works as well. Um, and also not simply utilizing it as kind of an embassy show, which you often see in kind of mm. these quote unquote peripheral locations. Mm. Um, 
but actually trying to kind of think about, again, the relationship between these works. What are these works? How can they kind of be related to what's happening in the Philippines and Manila today? Brilliant. Yeah, and I mean, if, if you're listening and you haven't already been to the exhibition, I'd really recommend going and checking it out. It's only there for a little while longer. Um, but if, if it's too late, hopefully that's given you a flavour of, of what it was and you can catch up later with the book and follow it, follow its progress from there. Um, so, Raphael, thanks so much for joining us, a really no whistle-stop tour yeah. <laughs> of, the, of the exhibition. Uh, and thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to hear more, you can head over to the SOAS blog or visit our website.